Hi everybody, the next surgical video I'll be showing is a arthroscopic labrum repair of the shoulder. The labrum is found deep in the joint, so you'll be seeing the glenohumeral joint, also known as the ball and socket joint, and you'll be seeing me reattach the labrum back to the bone. It's a very cool video. There isn't much blood at all, so, you, so if you're squeamish, you don't need to worry about this one. It's arthroscopic. How does a labral tear present? Well, usually there's trauma, usually there's a fall, uh, skiing, biking, or maybe an arm bar maneuver uh, in MMA where the arm gets pulled and the tissues are stressed and the labrum is torn. The patient will usually present either with clicking or catching with, with rotational movements. We operate on the ones that are causing terrible pain, clicking, catching, or dislocation. The video's coming up. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment. Ask a question. I'll get to it. You guys take care. Have a great day. Thank you so much for your interest in what I do and for following. Very unstable labrum. Some knots over here on the dumpers. We're going to push down the knots. This is an iconics from Striker Anchor. Very low profile tape. I'm pressing that labrum up against the bleeding bone that was already prepared. Okay, I'll get a knot down just like you do with a, with a birthday present and then locking it down just like that. Okay. Labral repair on a uh, athlete that had locking and attaching their shoulders. So here now it's a drill guide, and what I'll be doing next is I'll be repairing the superior labrum. That's this structure right here, which kind of looks like an O ring. I like to describe the labrum to patients as an O ring. So you can see the front of the O ring, the top of the O ring, and the back of the O ring, and that's usually uh, described as superior, anterior, posterior uh, labrum. So now we're working on the superior labrum. I'm going to reattach this labrum onto this bone here that I've already prepared. You can see the nice rough surface right there with some bleeding. So this will be attached once again with an anchor. We just drilled a pilot hole. Pilot hole has been drilled. Sliding it in. It gets tapped into that pilot hole. It engages the side of the pilot hole. I check the anchor, feels really good. And then I use a specialized passer to pull the sutures through the, the desired repair tissue. I'm going to pull it up here, penetrate the labrum, and then I go through it. Okay. And then I use this capture device over here with a slingshot in a minute to grab my suture. So I'm trying knots over here. It's called a sliding knot. And the knot is tied outside of the patient and then pulled in like this. See, there's a knot coming in, sliding knots, knot pusher. There we go, like this. Knot pusher is used. You go like this. And then, there we go. There we go. Compress just enough. You don't want to choke, you don't want to strangulate, you just want to compress. And press it up against the bone nicely like that and then we lock it in 
and everything just like that. That looks really nice, just like that. So superior leg over Perry Star. Superior leg over the patch nicely there. It looks really good. This patient had had a prior uh, biceps tenodesis in the past, uh, but continued that catching and locking. I think part of that catching and locking came from the label. So what I'm going to do is smooth this area out, just kind of feather the edges so that nothing else catches, and then remove anything that could be catching, like a little bit of frayed tissue there that I'll smooth out. Anterior labrum. I tightened up the patient a little bit because it looked like it had a little bit of instability. That's what I did over there, tighten it up a little bit. So I just wanted to show you uh, what uh, labral repair, at least one of many techniques, what it looks like. You guys take care. Thank you so much for watching.